In the eyes of many folks, ancient Egypt could be considered a bit creepy. Most scholars agree that ancient Egypt began when the lands around the Nile River were united around 3100 BCE and ran until Alexander the Great strolled into town in 332 BCE. Many different animals were mummified by the Egyptians, but not all of them are what they seem. However you put it, that's a lot of time for a civilization to develop a set of complicated beliefs. Over the course of its long history, the land of the pharaohs came up with a few things that are pretty odd to us today. See for yourself. 15 amazing discoveries in Egypt that scare scientists. Number 15. Book of the Dead. The Book of the Dead is the modern term for a collection of sacred writings that ancient Egyptians used to help the recently deceased get into the afterlife, a kind of journey you had to make to get to paradise. But apparently, it was a hazardous journey, so you'd need magical help along the way. For these ancient people, it's a practical guide to the next world with spells that would help you on your way, and it was placed in the coffin or burial chamber of the deceased. The book is usually a roll of papyrus with many spells written on it in hieroglyphic script. The finest extent example of the Egyptian Book of the Dead is the Papyrus of Ani. Ani was an Egyptian scribe. It was discovered in 1888 and was taken to the British Museum where it currently resides. The surviving documents contain a varying selection of religious and magical texts and as you can see, vary considerably in their illustration. Depending on how rich you were, you could either go along and buy a ready-made papyrus that would have blank spaces for your name to be written in, or you could spend a bit more and probably choose which spells you wanted. They would have been quite expensive, so only wealthy people would have had them. Now, let's get ready for today's open discussion. The discovery in Egypt scares scientists for obvious reasons. Do our eyes deceive us? Or is that just a mermaid skeleton just casually chilling in the sand? And what's with the seahorse skull as big as a person? Did you know they could even be that big? There's a lot to unpack in this amazing discovery. A bit like a cross between the Little Mermaid, the Siren of Greek myth, and that creepy girl from the Ring movies. Just within the past century, apparently, stories began to circulate in rural Egypt about a deadly mermaid. She apparently has a beautiful voice that calls by name to people walking the banks of the Nile. As for the seahorse bones, Hippocampus is the scientific name for the seahorse, a S-shaped fish with ringed bony plates and a dorsal crest. In Egyptian mythology, they were sea monsters, similar to aquatic horses, with the head of a horse but the winding tail of a fish or dolphin. Looks accurate to us. What do you think? Are we looking at ancient mythological monsters? Leave your comments with the hashtag open discussion. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14. Organ Jars Canopic jars were used by the ancient Egyptians during the mummification process to store and preserve, you guessed it, human organs of their owner. The whole death thing was quite a process for ancient Egyptians and the organs were not kept in a single jar. Each jar was reserved for specific organs. They were commonly either carved from limestone or made of pottery, and they were used by the ancient Egyptian during the rituals of mummification processes. They firmly believed that the deceased required his or her organs in order to be reborn in the afterlife. For use in the afterlife, they would be bandaged and vital organs placed individually in jars like this. The jars had lids or stoppers that were shaped as the head of one of the minor funerary deities known as the Four Sons of Horus. It was the job of these four deities to protect the internal organs of the deceased. The baboon-headed guarded the lungs, the human-headed was the guardian of the liver, the jackal-headed guarded the stomach and upper intestines, and the falcon-headed guarded the lower intestines. The four jars were then buried with the deceased. Number 13. Pharaohs found the Sphinx. In ancient Egypt, when pharaohs wanted to record something important and have it be known to not only mortals but more importantly to the gods, they wrote in stone. The hieroglyphs carved into the dream stella of Thutmose IV, an enormous upright slab at the base of the Sphinx, tell the story of a young king's bargain with the sun god. According to the stella, Thutmose was strolling here one day, all alone. He got very hot and decided to rest in the shadow of the Great Sphinx. And at that moment, when the sun was at the top of the sky, 
a God came to him in a dream and basically told him that if he cleared away the sands that had been building up around the Sphinx, the God would make sure that Thutmose was the ruler of Upper and Lower Egypt. The lion was a powerful symbol in ancient Egypt as it represented strength and courage. The statue, with a man's head and a lion's body, stands 66 feet high and 240 feet long. The fact that Thutmose restored it emphasized that he was doing one of the main tasks that a king had to do, which was to maintain all the sacred monuments to the gods. In doing that, he was maintaining the Egyptian idea of truth, order, and justice. Number 12. Bent Pyramids Located at the Royal Necropolis of Dashur, approximately 25 miles south of Cairo, the Bent Pyramid is a unique example of early pyramid development. Tourists will now be able to clamber down a 260-foot-long narrow tunnel from a raised entrance on the pyramid's northern face to reach two chambers deep inside the 4,600-year-old structure. It rises from the desert at a 54-degree inclination, but the top section is built at the shallower angle of 43 degrees, lending the pyramid a visibly bent appearance. At the first geometrically true pyramid in the world, the bent pyramid shows its uniqueness not only from the method of construction, but also manifest through the surrounding landscape. The Bent Pyramid sits aside in the middle of a pristine desert area instead of a fertile area near the Nile River like all the other pyramids. When the archaeologists observed the landscape closely, the plateau of the pyramid seemed leveled artificially and nearby escarpment and trenches were all made by human beings. Moreover, there were a few traces left indicating a buildup of a garden enclosure just another stunning example of the significance of the ancient structures in this region. Number 11. Egyptian God Scan These two ancient Egyptian sarcophagi were thought to contain human remains for the longest time. In fact, both of these ancient sarcophagi's official records suggested that they contained mummified people. However, state-of-the-art scanning technology revealed a surprise inside. The mummies were not, in fact, human. When a team of archaeologists CT scanned the 3,000-year-old mummies, the remains of the childlike mummy were found to be a sort of offering to the gods, packed with mud and grains. The other one was actually a bird. The larger of the two mummies was actually a handcrafted doll known as a corn mummy. Birds had a very significant role in those days because they were thought to be protectors, so they were often placed in the tombs with the pharaohs. In ancient Egypt, when a mummy was being placed in its tomb, Artifacts and occasionally mummified animals were also added to symbolically protect the mummified remains and the journey to the afterlife. Researchers said it's possible these two mummies were buried in a pharaoh's tomb. This was ancient Egypt, after all. Number 10. 2,000-year-old Secret Staircase The Temple of Dendera is one of the best-preserved temples in Egypt, and this is an up-and-close look at the temple's secret staircase. There's something else special about this temple as well. It bears the name of Cleopatra and her son, whose father was Julius Caesar. It's possible that these celebrated rulers climbed these same stairs. The Dendera complex has long been one of the most tourist accessible ancient Egyptian places of worship. It used to be possible to visit virtually every part of the complex, from the crypts to the roof. It was known as the Castle of Sistrum, or the House of Hathor. In ancient times, this was a place associated with healing. Patients who traveled here could rest, sleep, and commune with the gods, they believed. The walls, rooms, roof, and this amazing 2,000-year-old staircase are complete and extraordinarily well-preserved. The ceiling of the Hathor Temple was cleaned in a careful way that removed hundreds of years of black soot without harming the ancient paint underneath. Spectacular ceiling painting was exposed in the main hall, and some of the most vibrant and colorful paintings are now inside. The stone steps of the spiral staircase are time-worn, but may still be used to ascend to the roof, where there is a small chapel. Number 9. Golden Mummies Discovered in 1996, approximately 250 mummies, approximately 2,000 years old, were recovered over the period of several seasons here in the Valley of the Golden Mummies. It's a huge burial site in the western desert of Egypt, bigger than archaeologists first thought. Eventually, the excavator further estimated a total of more than 10,000 mummies. The mummies found here show that people during this period were wealthy because they were able to afford gilding and cartonage depicting beautiful scenes. 
hence the Golden Mummy moniker. Many of them were still in good condition and decorated in different styles. Artifacts had been buried with each mummy. Some examples include jewelry bracelets, pottery of food trays, wine jars, and coins. Evidently, this was a substantially affluent community, given that many of its members could afford burial extravagantly ornamented with all that bling. Each mummy is different with the various styles and artifacts representing each individual. The site has, by far, the largest number of mummies found in a single site anywhere in Egypt. Number 8. Schist Disk The infamous Disk of Sabu is one of the most mysterious objects found in the tomb of Tutankhamun, whose true purpose is still a puzzle for researchers. It's known as the Schist Disk as it's made of schist stone, an extremely brittle sedimentary rock and not an uncommon material for the construction of vases and bowls in ancient Egypt. The prehistoric artifact was found in 1936 by a British Egyptologist and dates back to 3000 BC. Almost immediately following its discovery, the disc was dismissed as being just a vase or an incense burner or simply a trivial decorative or ceremonial item. But many believe that this is far, far from the truth. One glimpse and just the basic knowledge of engineering offers a wholly different interpretation of this unusual structure. The schist disc could be a part of a mechanism. It's even suggested that the object was discovered amongst the remnants of an older, more advanced civilization, one that preceded the earliest history of ancient Egypt. In the end, it remains entirely possible that the disc of Sabu was a crucial part of a more advanced design likened to a water pump. Considering the fact that the experiments using a disc replica were highly successful in that role, it could certainly function as one. Number 7. Curse of King Tut Known as the Boy King because of his age, Tutankhamun was around 8 or 9 when he became the pharaoh. He's one of the most famous and well-known of the great pharaohs that ruled ancient Egypt. He went on to rule for roughly 10 years until death and was buried in the Valley of the Kings, home to the tombs of ancient Egypt's great rulers. While his fellow pharaoh's tombs were pillaged by grave robbers and later excavated by archaeologists and explorers, Tutankhamun's remained untouched. Among the world's most famous curses is the Curse of the Pharaoh, also known as King Tut's Curse. Ever since King Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered, stories circulated that those who dared violate the boy king's final resting place faced a terrible curse. It's widely claimed that many people associated with opening the tomb fell soon victim to the curse, dying under mysterious circumstances. The legend gained traction because a few of the people who were involved in finding the tomb did, in fact, die not long after it was opened. There were many dozens of people connected in some way to opening Tutankhamun's tomb, ranging from security guards to archaeologists. In fact, the tombs of all royalty, not just his, were said to have exactly the same curse. Number 6. Khufu's Ship the discovery of the Khufu ship in 1954 is quite unique. It's an ancient Egyptian pharaoh's barge buried inside his funeral pyramid. The Khufu ship is one of the oldest, largest, and best preserved vessels from antiquity. For four and a half millennia, it lay undisturbed in its limestone sarcophagus. It measures 143 feet long and 19 and a half feet wide. Archaeologists stumbled across the vessel inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. However, the vessel was no easy rescue. It took 20 months to remove the boat's 1,224 separate pieces. The pharaoh's craftsmen shaped the ship's 30-haul planks from logs as long as 76 feet, like puzzle pieces. And interestingly enough, the Khufu boat features no nails, and a team of experts painstakingly reconstructed it. The wooden ship is 4,600 years old and was reportedly so well designed that it could still sail if launched back into the Nile today. Over a half century after the boat's discovery, scholars still debate its purpose. Some say the ship was a funerary craft for transporting Khufu's body on the Nile to the Giza necropolis or on a final pilgrimage to holy sites. Now fully reassembled, this extraordinary royal craft, one of the oldest planked vessels in the world, has revolutionized our understanding of ancient Egyptian shipbuilding. Number 5. Unfinished Obelisk the unfinished obelisk is nearly one-third larger than any ancient Egyptian obelisk ever erected. If finished, it would have measured around 137 feet and would have weighed nearly 1,200 tons, a weight equal to about 200 African elephants. Typically placed at the entrances of temples, they're the hallmark of ancient Egyptian ingenuity and engineering. 
The unfinished obelisk is the largest located in the northern region of the stone quarries of ancient Egypt in Aswan, Egypt. Lying as a sleeping giant in a bed of granite, it's an incredible look at the building methods of these monolithic monuments. The obelisk's creators began to carve it directly out of bedrock, but cracks appeared in the granite and the project was abandoned. The bottom side of it is still attached to the bedrock. The unfinished obelisk offers unusual insights into ancient Egyptian stone working techniques, with marks from workers' tools still clearly visible, as well as ochre-colored lines marking where they were working. Virtually nothing is known about which pharaoh ordered it and where it was supposed to be erected. Today, all these quarries in Aswan and the unfinished objects are an open-air museum and are officially protected by the Egyptian government. Number 4. Abu Simbel Abu Simbel Temple was constructed by the most celebrated ancient Egyptian king, Ramses II. The temple was mainly cut into a solid rock cliff. The main goal behind the construction was to celebrate the victory the king established during a battle in 1274 BC. The temple was dedicated to a number of ancient Egyptian gods, but as you can see, it's cut into a solid rock cliff, and back in the day, it was slowly being consumed by rising water. The original location of the two temples was at the banks of the River Nile, but eventually, water at the banks rose significantly and posed danger to the ancient temple. Because this temple was made of sandstone, it would eventually erode, so preserving the temples meant moving it in one piece. Engineers thought that they would have to cut around the entire monument to free it from the mountain. Underneath, 650 hydraulic jacks would gradually raise a quarter of a million tons, but they decided, in the end, to move smaller sections of the temple instead of all of it in one piece. So in 1964, the Egyptian government cooperated with 50 other nations to move the monument, piece by piece. The plan worked, and people enjoy the temple to this day. Number 3. Lost Golden City A large city, built more than 3,400 years ago, has been uncovered in Egypt. Archaeologists began searching for a temple near Luxor, but then found these mud brick formations in every direction. Experts have described the site as ancient Egypt's Pompeii, due to how well it's been preserved, despite lying unseen for centuries. They unearthed the city, which still had almost complete walls and rooms filled with tools, jewelry, scarabs, colored pottery, and bricks bearing seals of the reigning pharaoh when this was built. It's been described as the lost golden city of Luxor. It was not immediately clear how much actual gold was present in the city, but photos show a labyrinth of streets and buildings built with ancient brick. The site contains a large number of ovens and kilns for making glass and ceramics, along with the debris of thousands of statues. The city included three of the ruler's palaces and the empire's administrative and industrial center too. Just to locate the manufacturing centers of the region opens up the detail of how the Egyptians under a great and wealthy ruler did what they did. The 3,400-year-old royal city contains stunningly preserved remains of daily life activities. Number 2. Lion Mummies The unveiling of five ancient feline mummies, including at least two lion cubs, and a host of other artifacts in Saqqara, south of Cairo, has left Egyptologists buzzing. It's only the second time that lion mummies have been found. Each lion mummy in the latest trove dates to ancient Egypt's 26th dynasty, 664 to 525 BC. The artifacts were found with a larger collection of animal mummies, along with wood and bronze statues of cats and crocodiles. This is an extremely exciting and important find, as it sheds new light on the relationship between wild and dangerous animals and the ancient Egyptians. The latest announcement follows a revelation that 30 sealed coffins and their mummified human contents had been discovered at the same necropolis. It's possible that this hints at areas where lions were kept within Egypt, which we've seen depicted in images. But mummified lions of this age are very rare. CT scans identify two of the animals as lion cubs based on the size and shape of their bones, but the remaining three cats have yet to be definitively identified. The lion stature suggests they were not fully grown at the time of their death. The team plans on scanning the trio of still unidentified felines to gain a better sense of the animal's origins. Number 1. Rosetta Stone in 1799, a French soldier discovered this black basalt slab inscribed with ancient writing near the town of Rosetta, about 35 miles east of Alexandria, Egypt. 
The Rosetta Stone now resides in the British Museum in London for people around the world to enjoy. The irregularly shaped stone contained fragments of passages written in three different scripts. Of the three languages on the stone, the first was hieroglyphic, which was the script used for important or religious documents. The second was the common script of Egypt. The third was Greek, which was the language of the rulers of Egypt at the time. The Rosetta Stone is a text written by a group of priests in Egypt to honor the Egyptian pharaoh. It lists all the things that the pharaoh has done that are good for the priests and the people of Egypt, and according to the inscription on the stone, an identical copy of the declaration was to be placed in every sizable temple across Egypt. The importance of this to Egyptology is immense. When it was discovered, nobody knew how to read it. But the fact remains that the Rosetta Stone became a valuable key to deciphering many ancient Egyptian mysteries. No matter how sacred these scientists were when all this cool stuff was discovered, they still had a job to do. Serious science only when you're dealing with ancient Egypt. We get to watch the amazing mysteries unfold.